We are live from Haywoods on the Green in Mill Hall, and we welcome you to this Tuesday night's edition of the LHU Coaches Show. I'm Jonathan Schwab. We will be with you for the next half an hour talking with Lock Haven University coaches. If you're with us at Haywoods on this Tuesday evening, we're glad you have chosen to join us. It's great to have you with us. If you're listening on the Bear Country Sports Network, coming up in an hour, Lock Haven University football. At home, first PSAC East home game as the Bald Eagles welcome Shippensburg to town. And appropriate that we would open the show in that case with Lock Haven University head football coach David Tanner. Coach Tanner, great to have you on. Great to be here. Your team coming off your PSAC East opener on the road at Westchester. And early on, it was a defensive battle, 3 nothing after one quarter what was your defense able to do to take Westchester a little bit out of rhythm early in the game well um, we didn't give up the big play early in the game uh, you know they they were able to sustain a relatively long drive um, there would shoot up quite a bit of clock and uh, you know we uh, held them to held them to the field goal had an opportunity to pick off a ball um, which would have been a, a big game changing moment um, and then uh, you know, again, got them in another situation where they missed a field goal um, down there to start the game. So we were, we were able to um, hold them off the scoreboard a little bit, um, but play a little bit of bend, but don't break defense. Only four penalties this week, a season low for your squad. What did you see in terms of discipline that was improved in that aspect? Um, in, all, in all reality, I don't know if it was necessarily an improved level of discipline um, because two of those penalties were pre-snap penalties because pre-snap penalties are a focus and execution and we try to eliminate those completely so you know we had a we had an offsides and we also had a uh, well we actually it was two different offsides during the game um, that hurt us in different drives so for me um, post-snap penalties are a lot of times are, are a matter of playing aggressive football um, we we played aggressive football and I think also there was a a little different umpire in the game, um, a guy that uh, I, I want to take the opportunity to say something positive about a, an official one time. But the, uh, <laughs> but the umpire, we've had him, we had him in spring ball too. He does a great job inside and, and lets the guys play as far as inside. So there wasn't nearly as many holding calls as what you would see in some games. How much as coaches do you focus on who the officials are for a given game and the way those officials like to call games? Well, we, uh, we do our best to scout upcoming officiating crews because we're able to, to look at them and kind of get an idea from week to week and follow and then you see, so you can find the names and you can go look up on participation reports and at the bottom of those and box scores they'll always have them listed so you get a little bit of an idea of whether uh, a, a certain officiating crew may call things a little tighter or which ones may let it go a little bit more so you're able to do a little bit of it uh, but there's also a lot of intermingling of, of the staffs where it won't be the all of the same officials together at one time so that adds some variance into it. Now, this is crossing into a different sport, but I remember hearing somewhere that in baseball, Salvador Perez of the Kansas City Royals wears perfume to try to make his scent more appealing to umpires. Just one way, he tries to build a relationship in a positive way with those officiating the game. How much of what you're doing on the sideline with your interaction with officials is to have a good relationship so that you, at minimum, receive clear communication? Well, I, I, I know for certain I won't be wearing any perfume. <laughs> That's the, the, the first thing is I'm, I'm not a big perfume guy, so I'll, uh, I'll sit over there. I'm a 300-pound ex-center. I probably don't smell the best during the games either. Uh, but, you know, we, uh, we you obviously you want to build a rapport. You want to build a level of communication with officials, um, you know, and we, we have a, a process through the conference, too, where, where we send in evaluations and things. So I try to try to make sure that I'm – on, on time with doing those things so they get the best feedback they can in order to become better at their jobs also. Joined by Lockhaven University head football coach David Tainer on the LHU Coaches Show. We are at Haywoods on the Green in Mill Hall. We're here every Tuesday night from 7 until 7.30. Who are the guys who you thought really played well for you at Westchester? Well, um, the reality is I think we played pretty well up front. Um, Trent Fielding uh, on the offensive line. Uh, this is his in his fourth game, and he's had double-figure knockdown blocks in three of the four games. Um, so, you know, he's done a pretty good job playing at the point of attack. Um, John Ford got an opportunity as he got into the game and got some repetitions, and, you know, he took a, 
a little simple inside handoff, broke four tackles, turned it into a 14-yard gain. So he's shown some ability to be able to run through run through tackles. Um, we got you know some decent performances from other guys in the game, but we also you know we we didn't play to the level that we, that we needed to play to overall in the game. Uh, Kevin Chapel defensively, I think, pursued to the football well. We ran to the football better as a group um, this week than what we did the previous week on the defensive side of the football. Was really happy with the progress of Christian Martiers, a freshman who played started for us at outside linebacker. Uh, um, and got a lot of repetitions in the game and was able to get to the ball. And, you know, against Slippery Rock, they were able to run some bubble screens out on the perimeter. And um, he went underneath him a couple blocks. And then this week, he got over top of the blocks. He played physical. There's one play in which he basically decked the number two receiver, made the tackle out there for – as close to a tackle for, tackle for loss. I think they gave it a zero-yard gain, so he didn't get the TFL. But um, So there was some progress in those areas. You talk about a, a Christian Martier and so many other guys that we've talked about early in the season, freshmen who have received opportunities. We're going to talk a little bit more about those guys when we come back. Joined by Lock Haven University head football coach David Tainer. This is the Lock Haven University Coaches Show at Haywoods on the Green, presented by the Bear Country Sports Network. It is Great to be back at Haywoods on the Green in Mill Hall. If you're with us Tuesday night, we're glad you have chosen to spend your Tuesday evening with us. If you're listening on the Bear Country Sports Network on Saturday, we are within 45 minutes of kickoff. Lock Haven University football at home against Shippensburg. That will kick off at noon. Jonathan Schwab with Lock Haven University head football coach David Tainer and Coach Tanner, you talked a little bit in the last segment about Christian Martier, one of the many true freshmen you have out on the field getting reps in the early season. What do you feel is the toughest position group or toughest spot for a true freshman to come in and be able to contribute? Well, I think the two positions that are probably the most difficult um, for a true freshman to come in and contribute would be at the quarterback position um, because they have to learn – the entire offense and they're also going to have to learn to apply that offense against multiple different defenses throughout the year um, you know from and then probably offensive line and, and those are two positions that we're not really dependent upon true freshmen to play in right now um, on the defensive side of the ball we actually have quite a few true freshmen that are out there contributing between you know Fernando Flores, Christian Martir, Destin Woody, Noah Rainbow Douglas, um, we've had Elijah McBride uh, so we've had quite a few guys that have been out there and 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 they're they're getting better every single week um and, and part of the reason why they've gotten thrust into it I mean, we have as of right now five of our um 11 starters in the preseason roster that are out for various different reasons throughout the year but it's the next man up those guys got to be able to to step in continue to improve their play and battle so we always talk about those freshmen who are out on the field 37 freshmen in the class how many of those guys would you like to be able to redshirt and just get the practice reps and get acclimated to college this season? You know, it's all it's it, it all depends. Anytime you can get live game repetitions, you're going to improve a ton. So if there if there's an opportunity for guys to contribute, whether it be on special teams um, and in a backup role, um, offensively or defensively, we like to get those guys out there um, and get them repetitions because you, you learn from live repetitions. Um, so. The guys that are getting the opportunity in order to get in there and play right now, it's going to pay off for them down the line, even later down the line in this season. So, and it, you know, and then this will, this should be the last year that we really have to depend on a lot of true freshmen. Uh, there may be one or two special scenarios each year, uh, but you know, we got guys now that are getting experience, and those guys will be going into being the sophomores next year, and and we would expect them to continue to grow and and kind of ward off. Even though we're always going to go out and try to out recruit. Um, guys that we may have on the roster we plan on training the guys that we have on our roster to be better than the ones that we're recruiting so i mean it's a cyclical competition that you create through the recruiting and retention process so ideally quite a few true sophomores on the field next year there there should be quite a few true sophomores and there's going to be some some redshirt freshmen too we the whole class is the whole class isn't playing um, right now i would say we're probably redshirt we'll end up redshirting about half of the freshman class in this year Joined by Lock Haven University head football coach David Tainer on the LHU Coaches Show from Haywoods on the Green in Mill Hall and on the Bear Country Sports Network as well. Shippensburg, the opponent, coming up 
What should people know about this Red Raiders team? Uh, Shippensburg is a very balanced team. They, uh, offensively, they've been able to run the ball really effectively early in the year. Um, they've thrown the ball efficiently, uh, but they've, they've really made, made their way um, on the ground from an offensive standpoint. Defensively, they're their team, I mean, it's a it's a small look at statistic uh, that we kind of pay attention to as far as the average per drive that teams are getting on them, and they're right at the top of the conference when it comes to limiting opponent offenses from from, from gaining yards per drive. So they, they force a, they force a lot of uh, third down situations by being very sound on first and second down, um, and they'll be they'll be varied in their attack on third down. They run a few different coverages and different types of pressures, and we'll stand some guys up and run what we call radar, which guys are on their feet and moving around and, and then attacking the line of, line of scrimmage from a standing position. We'll have more on Shippensburg in the pregame. That's coming up on the Bear Country Sports Network in just a little bit. I won for fun for Wachaven University head football coach David Tainer. So much of the job of a coach is travel. A lot of that time spent in your car if you could choose a mode of transportation besides car, what would be your preferred method of transportation? Flying. That's the one. Uh, when it comes down to we we we, uh, we ride around in buses, but I have a I have I don't know if it's a mental block, but I can't sleep on a bus. So you know, <laughs> even even last week when we drove we drove back from Westchester, when we get back to two o'clock in the morning, I looked around the bus and I was the only person that was awake at two <laughs> o'clock in the morning for the entire trip. So if for some reason I can sleep on a plane, so I guess I'll choose the plane. Lock Haven University head football coach David Tanner. Thank you for the time and good luck against Shippensburg. Well, thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Coming up next on the Lock Haven University Coaches Show, it will be Lock Haven University head baseball coach Jim Chester. If you are taking in the Lock Haven University Coaches Show presented by the Bear Country Sports Network. Welcome back to the Lock Haven University Coaches Show from Haywood's on the green in Mill Hall. If you're listening on the Bear Country Sports Network, we are about 40 minutes away from Lock Haven University football as the Bald Eagles host Shippensburg. Jonathan Schwab, very excited to be joined for the first time this year by Lock Haven University head baseball coach, Jim Chester. Coach Chester, welcome to the show. Thank you, Schwabby. Honored to be here. And uh, now, now we're getting carried away. It's an honor. I, I don't know, but it no, is. Any time in your presence <laughs> is an honor, Schwabby. I cherish every moment. Well, there are exciting things going on with your program. And, and let's start with the new scoreboard that just went up at the Foundation Field Complex over at the Stern Family Athletic Complex. How does it look? How happy are you with it? Uh, the scoreboard's amazing. Uh, it's a great addition to our complex. Uh, it's something uh, we, our, myself and the administration have been working on for about a year. And uh, thankfully to the uh, Fraternal Order Eagles in town and their generosity, uh, we've been able to make a outstanding addition to the complex. Uh, first of all, uh, we hope many in the uh, near future. You alluded a little bit to the, the contributions made, but what was the process like to bringing that new scoreboard to fruition? I mean, obviously there's a lot of red tape and different things that go on when you're putting a structure that size up. But, uh, we had a lot of cooperation uh, you know, with the university, Woodward Township, Army Corps Engineers, Clinton County. I mean, there's a lot of different avenues that we had to uh, address to make sure we get that done. But everybody collaboratively worked together and just, you know, got another, uh, you know, great thing to the uh, complex. You have your players back in town. You've had them <laughs> for about a month. What were the goals you asked them to achieve over the summer? Well, 19 of our uh, players played in uh, very competitive summer collegiate leagues this summer. So, those guys got an invaluable experience, uh, you know, playing in front of big crowds and against uh, a lot of Division One and high-end Division Two competition um, all summer. So uh, those young men actually uh, finished, you know, playing 40, 50 games at the beginning of August and then, you know, took some time off and came back. And uh, they, they have just been on a mission since the day we started in the weight room um, and on the field just to have the best season that we possibly can this year. Uh, a lot of the wins and losses that are they're going to happen in, March and April and early May um, start now and this is the best practice of the year honestly and it's probably the best weather that we see <laughs> you know uh, down the stretch so it's, it's just been an, it's been an outstanding month and uh, we, we have a hungry bunch we really do um, they're out to you know really make some noise this spring 
what are you looking for in those fall workouts that you were just referring to in order to accomplish what you need to to be where you need to be in March and April? Uh, on, honestly, just becoming a better player and a, uh, and a better team every day. Uh, what's been great about this fall is that, uh, you know, we have, we have so many guys back from last year that, you know, I'm not saying practice runs itself, but many of them know what to do before we do it. When we post a practice plan, uh, two-thirds of the team knows exactly what's going on before it even happens, and it's helped with the transition of our um, new players, our freshmen, and a lot of our transfers that, uh, you know, and it's, it's been a quick mesh. And practice has been very efficient. Uh, we've been able to maximize every minute. And, and just, uh, you know, the, the staff is excited to be there every day. Joined by Lockhaven University head baseball coach Jim Chester on the LHU Coaches Show from Haywood's On the Green in Mill Hall. If you'd like to come and see the recording and filming of the show, you can do that every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. until 7.30. You can also hear the show rebroadcast every Saturday before Lock Haven University football games. And if you're listening on the Bear Country Sports Network, coming up, it's a noon kickoff for LHU football hosting Shippensburg. With LHU head baseball coach Jim Chester and coach, very exciting for your program coming up in just a few days. For those of you who are at Haywoods tonight, it's three days away. Friday, September 30th, a nine-inning exhibition game at Penn State. How did this game come to be? Well, I've been very lucky. I uh, have a uh, relationship with Coach uh, Rob Cooper at Penn State. Uh, I was lucky to have that even before I got the job at Lock Haven. So it was, uh, was kind of neat when I got the job here. Uh, one of the first things Coach Cooper said to me was, we've got to play. And I said, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And uh you know, what a better place to play than uh, Medlar Park uh, in, in State College. I mean, it's probably, uh, if not the, one of the top ten finest facilities in college baseball. And it's uh, it's just such a great opportunity for our young men to play Penn State, um, at Penn State, in that facility, and really uh, have that opportunity. But, you know, if it wasn't for Coach Cooper, um, you know, this, this probably wouldn't be able to come about and uh, be able to provide the experience uh, for, you know, our program. What is the message you've been delivering to your players about what you want to accomplish with this exhibition game? Well, we just want to go down and we, we, we want to compete at a high level. Uh, we, we want to go down and, and, and obviously uh, we want to score more runs in Penn State. There's no doubt about it. Um, but we also want to go down there and you know, we want our guys to, be, uh, to compete, be fearless. Um, and we want to throw strikes and we want to make plays and we, and we want to be very efficient on the offensive side of the game. And, and um, you know, you know, we, we try telling our guys, hey, listen, it's just, it's, hey, we got a fall exhibition, it's just another game. But that's not true. You know, we're getting to play uh, a Big Ten school on a Friday night before a home football game. I mean, it's, it's going to be a big deal. It really is. And um, we're trying to treat it that way, too. And I know we're really excited. And, you know, and it's not like we're sitting here preparing for Penn State. You know, we're preparing for the spring season. But what a way to go under the lights here to, you know, to see what our guys got. Again, that's 6.30 p.m. Friday night at Medlar Park at Lubrano, excuse me, Medlar Field at Lubrano Park at Penn State. Our one for fun with Lock Haven University head baseball coach Jim Chester. When you're not immersed in the world of sports, what's something you really enjoy doing? Uh, when I'm not, when I'm not uh, involved with the baseball program, I'm spending time with those two. Um, that's mostly uh, what I do outside of the uh, uh, baseball world. There's pretty much my life revolves around, uh, you know, being at our field, uh, involved in our program, and uh, spending time with uh, these two over here, Lindsay and Marin. For the folks who can't see on the radio, if you could explain a little bit about these two. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Lindsay's my fiance is over here, and Marin's my four-year-old daughter. Uh, and, uh, you know, we uh, spend a lot of time together in uh, – if it wasn't for those two, I'd probably, uh, baseball would drive me crazy. So I'm glad they're in my life. Well, one more time, 6.30 Friday night at Penn State, Lock Haven University Baseball. Coach Chester will be talking a lot more with you in about six or seven months' time, but we appreciate you coming on, and, and the best of luck over at Penn State. No, thank, thank you, and uh, go Haven Nation. That will do it for this week's edition of the Lock Haven University Coaches Show, and we appreciate everyone 
coming out at Haywood's on the green on this Tuesday night. If you're listening on the Bear Country Sports Network, coming up next, Lock Haven University football, the pregame. LHU welcoming Shippensburg to town. It's a noon kickoff. Nate Carpenter and I will have the call. That'll do it for the LHU Coaches Show, presented by the Bear Country Sports Network.